Today's lesson is taught by Catdoor the Wizard. Catdoor the Wizard loves nothing more than slaying dragons or casting spells. But most of all, he needs to inform you that if you do not study, you shall not pass. I don't get it. Hmm. Enjoy the show. Uh, hello. There's a little button on the top left that says wreck. I'm sure that means record. <laughs> Again, I'm Cat Door the Wizard. I am here to teach mathematics instead of my cousin Nicholas, who is taking the afternoon off to pray to his God, Jesus. The only God I serve is magic and Jesus as well. I'm going to. Hit Nicholas told me everything I need to do. I hit uh, I need to hit this present now button. And go to the thing that says smart learning suite. Hit share. Okay. Nicholas told me that you are going to spend the next week reviewing everything that our principles of algebra has learned for the first four months of the school year. Uh, and henceforth I shall deliver you instruction uh, uh, and it shall be grand. And as long as you do well, you will do, you will pass. But again, uh, if you do poorly, you shall not pass. You shall not pass. Bear luck. Okay. You are learning this because this is uh, what all eighth graders need to learn, whether you are in geometry or principles of algebra. Most of this stuff is things you already know, of course. It's all review. It's all good. As the hipsters say uh, on the magic talking cuboids, that is also known as television. What is this? I'm going to hit play. All right, solve for y. We have to get y all by itself. Negative 2 and positive 8 are in the way. Uh, in order to get rid of those two things, we have to do the opposite. Always get rid of the number floating around first, and that's positive 8. The way we do that is we subtract 8 from both sides, cross that out. That leaves us with negative 2 on the left equals negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13. Okay? Y is still not all by itself yet. You have to do the opposite of what negative 2 is doing to Y. Since negative 2 is being multiplied to Y, we divide both sides by negative 2. Cross out the negative 2s. Negative 13 divided by negative 2 is positive 6 and a half or 6.5. Or you could just have 13 over 2. Yes, <laughs> What a wonderful and handsome voice. That is the voice of my cousin, Nicholas. What we have to do is we have to use magic to make numbers disappear. And it appears to me that Y needs to be alone in isolation, cast out from the chasms from whence it came. So I'm going to make four disappear. And the way we're going to make four disappear is we're going to subtract four from both sides. Cross out the four. And after I cross out the four, I can bring down the y and 9.5 minus four alakazam is 5.5. 5, five and one half. And I know this makes sense because I could just take five and one half and replace the Y with that. And four and five and one half equals nine and one half. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. 
Thank you, O oh Lord of Magic, for raining down your knowledge upon our, our brows. Moving on. It appears that A needs to be alone, isolated, cast from the demons that once inherited its body. We must cast away nine, and we must cast away negative three. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the thing that's floating around the vest. What is floating around, you ask? Well, the nine is floating around. So I'm going to subtract the nine from both sides. This magic wand is not as good as I had hoped. If I have 15 gargoyles and I kill nine gargoyles, there shall remain six gargoyles. Thank you. Kamala for answering that in the chat. Keep in mind, I don't know your names. So if I'm, so I, I'm assuming it's pronounced Kamala for I have looked in the future. And it seems to me that here in the year of our Lord 2021, that there is a special woman named Kamala. Is that you? Are you the special woman named Kamala? Lol Idke, I don't understand. Is A all by itself? No, there is a negative three attached to it. And I have to get rid of that negative three. And the way I get rid of the negative three is I divide both sides by that negative three. It is important to cast all negative answers and energies out of all things henceforth. So I'm going to divide out negative three. A is all alone. And if I have six and I divide six by negative three, I get... Hmm. What sorcery is this? I hope somebody in the chat places the answer before I can get this weird machine. Negative two. Thank you, San Diego. You're a fine young person. Did you know, San Diego, that your name means Saint Diego in the in Elvish? Saint Diego in Elvish? We shall go forward for the journey does not end here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What? Why, there's ends on both sides of the equal sign. What kind of possession is this? I shall exercise the ends out, one from the left or the right. I shall first get rid of one point, one and four tenths N. And the way I will get rid of one and four tenths N is I will subtract it from both sides. You see, this is like saying I have one and four tenths newts on this side, and I have three and eight tenths newts on this side, and we don't need that many newts. So if I subtract one and four tenths newts from both sides, I'm taking away one and four tenths newts from three and eight tenths newts, and that leaves me with four, two and four tenths newts. Minus 13 equals positive five. Now, it appears to me that we have two steps before we shall complete this problem. I am going to add 13 to both sides because negative 13 is floating around. And the inverse of negative 13 is plus 13. So through the powers of addition, I now have two and four tens. <laughs> <laughs> two and four tenths N equals 18. Yes, yes. Marvelous. 
is N alone. Cast all by itself, you ask? And I answer thee, no. No, it is not. So I'm going to divide both sides by two and four tenths. I believe that the answer is... Eight? <laughs> oh, Lord, what is 18 divided by 2.4? Oh, Lord of mathematics. Let's try that again. Oh, King of math. What is 18 divided by 2.4? I found this on the web. Okay. What is 18 divided by 2.4? The answer is 7.5. Oh, thank you, Crystal Ball. Thank you. We honor you, Crystal Ball, with the British accent. Look. It's it. Oh, oh, nuts. It went away. <laughs> How inconvenient. <gasps> What's this? Another video? Oh, let's watch it together and understand the words being spoken from my cousin Nicholas. Genius of geniuses. All right, distributed property everywhere. We have negative three multiplied to a parentheses. We also have just a regular old negative multiplied to a parentheses. So let's get to it. Negative three times positive two X is negative six X. Negative three times negative five is positive 15. Negative times six is negative six. Negative times positive five X is negative five X. Now what we have to do is we have to get rid of one of these X's because there's an X on the left and an X on the right. I'm going to add the 6X from the left because I know by adding a 6X to a negative 5X right here, I'm going to get just an X. Minus 6 drops down, that's a positive X. 15 drops down. Uh, in order to get X all by itself, I add 6. I add 6. 21 equals X or X equals 21. Interesting. So it appears to me that when you have a number attached to a parentheses, you take that number and you multiply it to everything inside the parentheses, hence. And so if I have nine groups of eight demons, that gives me 72 demons. And if I have nine groups of negative five, that's uh, negative 45. And then I add plus 13 equals 12 demons minus two. Oh, it looks to me on the left that I can combine like terms and make that negative 32. So the 72 demons come along. And that's going to equal 12 demons minus 2. Now we have 72 demons on the left. And we have 12 demons on the right. And I will use my powers of exorcism to cast out the 12 demons on the right. Which, of course, is wizard speak for subtract 12D from both sides. Oh, I certainly hope not, Santiago. <laughs> San Diego, I mean. 60 demons. Minus 32 equals negative. Two is D all by itself. No, let's add 
inverse of negative 32, add 32 to both sides. Let's rewrite it up here. In the north, 60 dogs equals 30. Is D all by itself? No. I have 60 multiplied to D, where the opposite of multiply is divide. And if I divide both sides by 60, that leaves me with D equals one half. Er, curse you, stylus that my cousin purchased from Electronic Bay. Onward! Solve for y. In order to get y all by itself, you need to get rid of this negative 3. You need to get rid of that 7x that's floating around. Always get rid of the thing that's floating around first. So since this is a positive 7x, we're going to subtract 7x from both sides like so. Cross out the 7x. That leaves us with negative 3y equals... Now, these two don't combine because the negative 6 doesn't have an x, but the negative 7x does. So we're going to write out negative 7x minus 6 because they're both negative y is still not all by itself you have to divide everything everything by negative three and when you do that negative over a negative is a positive seven thirds x negative over a negative is a positive two and that's it so it appears that what was done is we got y all by itself and even though there was an x we still got y all by itself. And here we have a problem, a formula, if you will. Maybe it's a formula to help me uh, cast spells on mine enemies. P equals 2L plus 2W. My job is to get W all alone, so allow me to cast away the W that's red and make it a green W. What shall I do first? Let's get rid of that 2L that's floating around, minus 2L from both sides. Cast away the 2L. What that leaves us on the left is... <laughs> what that leaves us on the left is 2 minus... No, P minus 2L. And that's going to equal 2W. Is W alone? No, we have to get the W all by itself. And the way we get the W all by itself is we divide. Divide everything by 2. All of it. If I cross out the 2 over 2, then I'm going to cross out the 2 over 2. And that leaves us with P over 2, that's an over 2, minus L equals W. Now, if I know my cousin and I feel like I do because I can see his behaviors through a crystal ball, and let me tell you something. What that guy does when no one's watching is an abomination. Oh, uh, anyway, he likes to put that W on its the left all by itself. So W equals P divided by 2. Minus L. Now W is all alone. Yes. Yes. What we have here is a terrible, terrible, terrible word problem and perhaps I shall zoom in so you can see it more clearly. Hank's Bicycle Rentals charge an initial fee of $15 and an hourly rate of $5 to rent a bicycle. 
Maria's bicycle rentals has the same hourly rate, but charges an initial fee of $12. Ooh, Maria seems to be a better deal. Of course, I don't pay with money. I pay with mushrooms. To find the number of hours for which the two rental companies would charge the same amount to rent a bicycle, Cindy writes and solves the equation shown below. So let me write this equation here. We have 15 per 15 plus 5x plus 5 equals 12 plus 5x. Well, chances are I'm going to have to just solve this equation. So let's get that done and out of the way. I'm going to subtract 5x from both sides. Cross you out. Hey, what? Oh, oh. 15 equals 12. Well, this cannot be. 15 doesn't equal 12. Why? Oh, uh, I'm waiting for somebody to put on the chat what the answer to this system or this equation is, because I simply don't know. And no one's doing it. Well, it appears to me that the variables have disappeared and we're left with an incorrect answer which tells me that this is a no solution. So how is that going to apply to this real life object about Hank and Maria's bicycle rental shops? Which statement describes the number of hours for which the two rental companies charge the same amount to rent a bicycle? The two companies charge the same amount and have to rent a bike. That doesn't make sense. The two companies charge the same amount to rent a bicycle for three hours. That doesn't make sense. The two companies never charge the same amount to rent a bicycle. That makes sense because if there's no solution, then there's going to be no way that these two shall equal. Now, if we had 15 equals 15, that would make that one true. But for some reason, I crossed it out. All right, looks like we have distributed property going on right here. We have a negative one half times a parentheses equals a fraction. Let's distribute that negative one half to both of these. Negative half of four X is negative two X. Negative half of negative three is positive. Negative times a negative is a positive. One half of three is three halves. That equals five over two. Now I have to get X all by itself. I got to get rid of the guy that's floating around first. We do the opposite of adding three halves, which is subtracting three halves. If you have five halves and you take away three halves, that leaves you with two halves or one. Drop down the negative two X. Get X all by itself by dividing everything by negative two, divide by negative two. And one divided by negative two is negative one half. Marvelous. Well done, sir. It appears that we have an abomination of a problem. I fear nothing. Not death. Not curse. Not not Ithacor, the the demon king of, of the south. I fear none of it. None. Allow me to take this problem as miserable and as horrible and as wretched as it looks. Allow me to write it here. I have six times the parentheses, one half X plus two. That's a plus two, as you can clearly see, minus X equals one half six X plus two. Let me erase that. All of a sudden, everything got really slow on my end. Plus X. Plus 
let's first cast six into both and distribute the six to one half x. So I have six times a half is three x. Three x's? Sounds like my cousin Nicholas's dating history. <laughs> if only you knew how wildly true that was. Plus 12 minus x equals i. It appears I distribute yet again. One half times 6x is 3x. One half times 2 is plus 1 plus x plus 1. Now I shall combine all the terms on the left. I have 3x minus x. And that gives me 2x plus 12. I have 3x plus x. And that's going to equal 4x. One plus one, two. It appears to me that I have two zinc dwarfs on the left and I shall remove it from the four zinc dwarfs on the right. Zinc dwarfs, of course, a troll from the north. Oh, I hate and I despise trolls. If there's one thing I abhor, it's trolls. Is hex all by itself? No. I'm going to subtract two first from both sides. That leaves me with a ten. 10 equals 2x. Is x all by itself now? No! I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. D for dragons! <laughs> One time... I rode a mighty dragon into a volcano. That's it. Not, not a good story. I just rode a volcano or a dragon into a volcano. All right, how many solutions does this equation have? We have double distributed properties, so we got to do this one quick. 3 times 2x, 6x. 3 times negative 9, negative 27. Drop down the equals. Negative 4 times 7 is negative 28. Negative 4 times negative 1.5x is positive 6x. You have a 6x on the left, you have a 6x on the right. If you subtract 6x, they will both disappear. And when they both disappear, what you have on the left is negative 27, and what you have on the right is negative 28. Since these guys don't equal each other, once the variables disappear and you have something that does not make sense, you have no solutions. So the question was, how many solutions does this have? Well, none, no solutions. No solutions like when I took the trek to Battendorf without any of my potions and I still was able to cast out the enemies and terrible warriors from that awful, awful town. Well, what I am trying to do is this paper, this script has been destroyed probably 
burnt off by some type of beast. We'll never know, but the corner has been ripped. Luisa knows only one number was torn off, and she knows that the equation has infinite solutions, which means the left side has to be the same as the right side. So what must the missing number be in order for it to be the left side matching up with the right side? Well, let's find out. Let's rewrite this entire equation. And I'm gonna put a question mark for what we don't know. Now, if I distribute the seven, that gives me seven X. If I distribute the seven, that gives me 21. Nine plus 10. And if I take seven and distribute that, I get seven X. And if I take seven and distribute that, I get 35. Now, what I have to do is I have to figure out the 7x and the 7x are already the same. The 21, 9 plus 10, is not the same as 35. What must I take away from 35 to get 21? Because these two have to be equal. Well, I'll wait for people in the chat to answer. What must I take away from 35 to get 21? in order for the left side and the right side to be exactly the same. 14, says San Diego, and he would be correct. Well done. Well done, students. Well, like all good stories, this story must come to an end. Capdor must fly away on his giant monarch butterfly to another land and teach other poor, uh, hopeless children mathematics so that their teacher can take a nice afternoon nap. And that, of course, is what your cousin, my cousin, is your cousin too. He's all of our cousins. God bless him. Well, I don't believe in you. Never mind. From, I will hit the stop button on this recording device.